Hello everyone, this is Jozef Not here and welcome to my talk uh, at the second online international meeting for users of Open Foam. And today I will talk about fire simulations in Open Foam. And I will concentrate on only RAS simulations here with a specific um, purpose. So the motivation of this talk is fire safety. Fire safety is a big issue and an important issue for especially for building engineers because you cannot just build a building and then do an experiment and burn it down just to know what a fire would look like in a building and then rebuild the building. You have to think about fire safety before you start constructing your building. And so analytical calculations and also simulations are the only tools to assess fire safety at, in a given building. And Open Foam offers solvers to do that. For example, the so-called solver Fire Foam. And I would like to test this solver and show you the results and give um, you my insights uh, compared to experimental data that I got out of the literature that you see in the bottom of this slide. Okay, so the theory, so Fire Foam is a rather complex um, solver with a compressible solver uh, where you have the full set of Navier-Stokes equations uh, with the co compressible terms and also the con full continuity equation and also the energy equation is a compressible one. It is of course transient so um, you depict the time and of course you have um, you could model a laminar flows but in this case it that what i'm going to show you is a fully turbulent flow of course <laughs> modeling um, a fire so it is of course non-isothermal so you have a long energy equation with enthalpy and the kinetic energy included then convection and uh, thermal conductivity in your gas as well as gravitational effects and most importantly additionally to radiation you have the heat that is being released due to the reaction. This is the Q dot HRR. So this is one of the key aspects in combustion modeling. And then you have for each of your species that you have during your reaction earn a transport equation for that species. So for example, we will take a look at a methane flame. So you have a methane as a fuel and this methane is being transported with the flow but also during combustion you produce for example water vapor or co2 and also these are transported with the flow and of course n2 and o2 as well so in this case the y plus y dot reaction term is very important so how much for example methane do you lose in your combustion in a time step or how much co2 for example do you create in a, during your combustion and exactly to de describe this you have to calculate the y uh, dot reaction and q dot hrr you always have different kind of analytic or non or um, empirical um, relations which you take and then you calculate those, those two values out of values that you calculate from the continuity equation from the Navier-Stokes equation and the energy equation for example here um, uh, for the infinitely fast chemistry you take for example y fuel and y o2 and the density and calculate it out of this so to calculate y dot reaction and q dot hrr you need it, you assume different models you, you you make certain assumptions and the differences between different models deal with these assumptions so i will talk about four uh, models which are implemented in open foam the infinitely fast chemistry which is as it, the name says infinitely fast it's mixed is burned and it assumes a perfectly stirred reactor in each cell then the second the EDM model, the added dissipation method is also mixed is burned with a perfectly stirred reactor which is 
a little bit more sophisticated than the infinitely fast chemistry, but it is still a simple model. Then the EDC, the added dissipation concept model, is a rather complex model. And the authors call it the well-stirred reactor, whatever that means. And then in the, uh, the fourth model is going to be the partially stirred reactor, where you have a stirred and an unstirred part of your cell. But let's you know, now go into um, a bit more detail. So as you see here in the infinitely fast chemistry, you, uh, what you do to calculate Q dot HRR, you take the heat of combustion, Q fuel, you multiply it with your Y plus dot reaction and the mass fraction of your fuel, and then you get your heat being released. Now, how you, do you calculate your Y dot reaction? So the production or destruction rate of your species. And this is given by, for your fuel, of course, um, uh, this is given by the so-called fuel consumption, consumption rate V fuel. And you calculate this V fuel, this uh, fuel consumption rate, and I don't really like this uh, um, name because it's not only valid for C, uh, for methane, for your fuel, but also for all the species. So it would be better name would be species consumption rate. So how much methane, but also how much CO2 you create or destroy. And V fuel is calculated out of the density. So you say in a cell, I take all the mass, the density. And then I divide it by delta t, so per time step. So I destroy, uh, I create or consume all the mass. But of course, this is not true. So you have to limit this with either the mass fraction of your fuel or the mass fraction of O2. So if you don't have um, oxygen available, then you don't have any combustion. Also, if you don't have fuel, then you also don't have combustion. So you limit the density with these two mass fractions. And then you divide by, the, uh, by delta t, and then you have a magical model constant, which is usually 5 or 10. Then in the next uh, model, in the EDM model, you assume a similar model. So you calculate q dot hrr and y dot reaction out of this v fuel value. But in this case, you don't divide by delta t but rather you have certain time scales. You have the diffusive time scale and the turbulent time scale, and you calculate those out of your the diffusive time scale out of your uh, constant value, your cell volume, and the laminar and the turbulent kinematic viscosity, and the turbulent um, time scale is calculated out of turbulent values and depending on which time scale is dominant in a cell it is being taken for V fuel. So this is the difference between the infinitely fast chemistry and EDM. Of course the assumptions are more sophisticated but this is what you actually see in the code happening. Now for EDC this is a much more complex model and there are four papers, at least four papers available, um, which are implemented in OpenFOAM. So you can choose different versions of EDC. And the difference between these models are usually changes in the model constant. And the, the default uh, publication, which is taken, is the version 2005. And if you're interested in more detail, then feel free to go through these publications. They are rather long publications, so it's a lot to digest, especially the, the, the assumptions and the theory behind it. And But if you just take a look at the source code itself and you go for the Y dot reaction and Q HRR reaction dot um, values, then it is rather simple. So what you take is you uh, you take the laminar, uh, what, what you, you would create in a combustion, uh, in a laminar combustion, and then you scale this heat release rate and also this uh, species uh, production rate with a value of kappa. And kappa is between zero and one. 
and then how you calculate this kappa this is the real deal this is what is being explained on all the in all those publications and the main so in the 2005 version for example kappa is gamma l square divided by 1 minus gamma l squared and how you end up with this relation this is what is being explained in the the publication and then the gamma l is uh, also a, a function of turbulent values and the, the, the differences between the publications are usually the constants for example to the power of 2 in the function for kappa and also in the function of gamma l there might be model constants which change between different publications but this is the basic idea of EDC and the partially stirred reactor is very similar. So each cell is divided into a perfectly stirred part and an unstirred part. And also in this case you limit your heat being released and the species being produced or destro destroyed by kappa. But in this case kappa is a function of time scales. It is the turbulent time scale which is a uh, um, a constant, a, C, a value of C mix, which is 1 or 1.5, and then turbulent values, the kinematic um, viscosity and epsilon, and the chemical timescale, which is a bit more complex, and uh, you can take a look at it in the source code. I just give you the path to the source code. So this is the two basic ideas. The, the simple ones take V fuel and the more complex one calculate kappa and then um, scale the laminar values. Okay, so now let's come to the actual case. So for that we take a look at the publication from Steckler, flow induced by a fire in a compartment and what Mr. Steckler did, he created a room with, with the dimensions of 2 point something meters by 2, 2 point something meters, so let's just say 2 meters by 2 meters by 2 meters with a, the one door and in the center of the room he placed a methane burner and then what he changed in his um, um, experiments he changed the power of the methane burner he changed the door so he completely opened the door and partially closed the, the, the door and also he just changed the location of the burner from the center to the side or close to the door and so on what he did he waited until he had a quasi steady state temperature values and then he measured the temperature along the center axis of the door so this is what uh, we are taking a look at. We take a look at the, the room itself, which you can see in this slide as a yellow room, and then the surroundings. And this is very important because you also want to uh, take a look at the influence of the surrounding onto the room. And we will take a look at this when we take a look at uh, the results. Okay, so for the mesh, I show you the mesh here because this is very, very important for this case. So the, you can see here the resolution. So the I, I used snappy hex mesh to create the mesh, but the base mesh was rather big with 0 0.2 meters. And then I did a resolution around the, uh, the region of the flames up until a sank, cell edge length of 0 0.025 so this is 25 millimeters um, for the uh, one s uh, edge uh, length and this is an era s mesh and if you take a look at open form and the tutorials all the fire foam tutorials come with las models and also the mesh is very fine but in this case you cannot allow yourself an LAS mesh. Otherwise you would end up with 15 million cells and that would run for a month. And I mean, yes, you could go onto a cluster and then run the 50 million cells there. But remember, we are talking about fire safety of large buildings like a car park or a stadium. And if you would use LAS models and an LAS mesh for a car park or a stadium, then you would end up with an insane number of cells, which is, uh, or it is impossible to run on even a cluster. So, for actual um, 
fire safety calculations you have to stick with an RIS mesh. And I personally refuse to run LAS simulations on an RIS mesh. And the point is, yes, you will make certain errors, but you have to know how big those errors are. And this is what I want to show you here. So with this mesh, we don't end up with 50 million cells. We only end up with 300,000 cells. But believe me, this is enough for because we have to calculate for a long time to get those steady state, quasi steady state um, temperatures. So for that, I take out of the publication a case with 105.3 kilowatt for the fire, which is in this publication a rather high value, but for real life fires, this is nothing. This is a small, small fire. Then, uh, and as you see, we simulate for 150 seconds. So it is a long, long simulation considering that the time step, time steps, time step size is uh, below milliseconds. So it's 10 to the power of minus four mostly. And we, I, we take the P1 radiation model because it is good enough. You don't need the discrete ordinates because you don't have a lot of structures inside of the room. So P1 for this case is okay. We use the K-epsilon model usually uh, because uh, the combustion models were validated for K-epsilon. We use a single equation reaction model. I did take a look at other reaction models, but there is not a big difference, at least for this case. And we use the GRI 3.0 thermophysical models for methane, for, for the thermophysical properties of all our species. And I did not change the constants of the combustion models. So, and now here you see the temperature distribution on a slice through the center of the room at the time 150 seconds. So you see on the left hand side the door and then you see how the hot air is contained by the walls for the infinitely fast model for EDM, EDC and the partially stirred reactor. And you see that there is not a big difference between the models for this case. But what is important here is that through the door you suck in cold air which and fresh air with uh, oxygen which is then pulled towards the flame and it feeds the flame with fresh oxygen on the bottom you have an inlet where you inject uh, your uh, methane and then you have oxygen and methane at the bottom in the center of the room and there your flame is starting and because you are pulling in fresh air from the door due to the pressure conditions here the flame um, leans towards the back wall and this is also what uh, they find in the experiments in the publication there is a schematic sketch of this behavior so this is nicely captured by all the models here and then the heat is um, rising upwards towards the ceiling and leaves the room uh, at, in, in the door on the upper half of the door. And now the question is, do we meet the correct temperatures in the door? So what you see on the door is that in the bottom you will have cold air up until a certain point, then you will have a rapid increase of temperature and then uh, a slower increase up until the end of the door. Okay, now if I take a look at the 18 pressure sensor, no, not pressure sensor, temperature sensors, which were also used in the experiments, you see here um, the temperatures over time. So we have an ambient temperature of approximately 30 degrees Celsius, which was given by in the literature from, from this publication of Steckler. And as you see, during the first 40 seconds, you have an unsteady um, interval where you have the flame and then the flame uh, oscillates and then after 40 seconds it starts to lean against the back wall and then you see that after approximately 100 and 120 seconds you have your 
quasi steady state temperature values. And what I will use uh, for the comparison between experiment and simulation, I will take the last 20 seconds of the temperature and uh, calculate an average value. But as you see, it is constant, so it's not a big difficulty to calculate the average here. So this is now the infinitely fast chemistry. You see that the maximum values are around 230 degrees Celsius for this flame with this op fully open door setting and the center setting of uh, the center location. Now for the EDM, the you see the same uh, sensors and now you see that you have also oscillations at the beginning and the maximum temperature is around 240 degrees Celsius compared to 230 with the infinitely fast reaction. With EDC you have a similar behavior uh, with a maximum temperature of around between 230 and 240 and with a partially stirred reactor, you also have a maximum temperature of a little bit less than 240 degrees Celsius. Now, if we compare the experimental results with these simulations, so if we take the last 20 seconds of all the simulation results and um, average them, and then take on the x-axis the, uh, the height, um, so in this case the Z coordinate of uh, at the center axis of the door and on the Y axis the temperature at the 18 pressure sensor not pressure sensor temperature sensors and you compare those to the experiments then you see in this diagram that in the simulations we find the cor correct order of magnitude however the temperatures rise, the lower height, uh, the temperature increase already starts at around between 0 0.7 and 0 0.8, whereas it starts in the experiments between 0 0.9 and 1 meter, and also the increase is higher. So there is a certain difference. As I mentioned, we are using RIS mesh, so a, a larger uh, a refinement. And so we are using coarser cells and there you see that there is a certain deviation. And so for the maximum temperatures we have for all the models a deviation of approximately 30%. So is this a good agreement? <laughs> I let you decide. And so my first idea that maybe I incorrectly entered the heat release rate. So I... I um, enter too much uh, methane for the case, so it's not 105 kilowatts. But if I take a look at the heat being released in Paraview, actually, I'm uh, due to numerical um, errors. The heat that is being produced by the, the combustion is actually a little bit less than 97 kilowatts. So it's a even a little bit lower than what I wanted. But still the temperature is much, much higher than in the experiment. So now why this happens? I, uh, I did uh, also additional simulations that I don't have I don't have the time to show you them here but I know that for example the deviation on the x-axis so the increase of the temperature is given by the turbulence model of k epsilon with km omega sst the increase starts of the temperature starts later at 0 0.9 and as for the deviation on the y-axis there I have also a couple of ideas what can happen and now let's come to the sum summary so we did uh, fire simulations in open form on, on an RIS mesh with uh, this purpose that this has to also work for large geometries for car parks for stadiums and as we saw fire form over predicts the temperature although the heat release rate of the combustion is approximately correct and then so my idea is additionally to use a different um, turbulence model is to test uh, uh, the heat release or so test a volumetric heat release with FV options and then check 
with the experiments and also then to use the volumetric heat release rate with conjugate heat transfer so with uh, but without combustion without all the difficult chemistry and if the results are better then maybe go for a com combined solver of conjugate heat transfer and combustion but that's something for the future maybe at a different conference or maybe next year i can talk about that so i hope that you enjoyed this presentation and i hope that you enjoyed the whole um, oimuo event and that you learned something and that maybe you can reach out to the authors and then you can cooperate i would like to thank you for watching and listening and i hope to see you next time